Hi, Kim. The shaggy-haired girl kneels on the sea ice. She looks up as you approach. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. Bathrobe! Thank you very much for the gift subs! Some very, very good people got those gift subs as well. Thank you very much, Bathrobe! That's amazing! Uh, Wednesday Eve, we're told we're in lockdown. Friday Eve, we're told to go and all... Told, told to go and all that, have a green pass, can attend. The rest got an absence badge. Odd. Yeah, that's super weird. I feel magnanimous. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Um, right, we have to ask her questions. Sure. Uh, other told me you were inside the church. What did you see? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. Brian? She's less prone to blurt it out, crab man, than the others. Hmm. Well, go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. Okay. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother. You know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression. Didn't say anything. Just stood still. That sounds like, um, the artist girl. Almost. Go on. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab. Down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. Okay. He stopped right before he got to the floor. Then just hung there like that, looking at me. Right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. <laughs> All the Chronos emotes. Like a crab, you say? Lieutenant nods, his face stone. What did the crab man look like? It was too dark. I couldn't tell exactly. Okay. Come on. She obviously could. She already went into detail. Uh, quit stalling. What did he look like? He looked like a banger, okay? He was all muscular and stuff. Had a mesh tank top. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that only made it scarier in a way. Okay. A crab and a banger. <laughs> a crab banger. Uh, the lieutenant raised an eyebrow. Yes, a banger. As in a mess gang member. I know what it sounds like, but that's what I saw. A gangster crab man. You know what? No, I believe you. Why? She raises a brow. Seems too ludicrous for a lie. I mean, there is that. I guess so. Anyway, what else? Uh, I'd like to know more about your associates. My associates? I haven't got much to say about them. Pretty please. Sorry. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. Okay, well how about yourself then? Me? I'm a silver bird. Anybody know what that means? <laughs> uh, I do have a green badge, full vax course. Oh, okay. But it's still... Okay, can't can't they decide something and then tell us tell us that and not jump around like a damn... Yeah. I, it sounds like probably that somebody in the higher up said one thing and then they got told to say another thing and so it was changed. Or people are just talking out of their ass. <laughs> Looks like people taste like crab. There you go. At least they don't taste like chicken. No, people taste like pe people taste like pork. I'm told. Interviewed a cannibal once for a story I'm working on. Uh, right. Maybe I'll ask about ask later about all this. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but. Okay. Can we can we My get sisters. anything? Do you know I something about them? Of course I do. Yeah. I okay. Don't know what makes you think it'll be. Right. Well, we started out over here in order to find the uh, cryptozoology trap, but now we've been wrangled into helping out with the club. So, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Genetically, we're closest to pork, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, 
some wild information to drop offhand. I interviewed a cannibal once. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> sign reads Saint Brune 1147. Okay. Anything in the window? Dusty pews in the shadows may seem to be missing. An altar shrouded in dark or something like that. Too hard to tell. Okay. Uh, can confirm human is moist, most similar to pork, pork, maybe a little like a shitty duck. Okay. How was the cannibal interview? Uh, online, because... <laughs> Uh, he well he was in he was in prison I, I interviewed him based on his charges and oddly enough he was really forthcoming so that was nice he he compared eating human to eating honeyed pork like that's that's the closest he got to it rusty gears okay chain trails off into the ocean who knows what's there the barrel seems to be recently discarded. It smells of fuel. Okay, what the hell's going on here? And where's the trap the guy was talking about? There it is. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps. Weighed down by stones to keep it in place. Right, take a look around. The reeds shake sadly in the coastal breeze. Snow specks the stalks. Most of it melts quickly. The reeds seem to be waiting for something. Interesting. I'll blame it on the cooking method. Well, he was he was a cannibal in the United States, so it's possible because we eat so much sugar here that has something to do with the meat. Just going to talk about people like their meat now. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> personally, I'm not a fan. Do not recommend. Fair enough. Regional de delicacy. There you go. The wind picks up here, near the Cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Poor people dropping here randomly, right? <laughs> Half expecting my viewers to just go, wee. <laughs> um, okay, reach for the trap. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Okay. Another empty trap. He takes notes more out of duty than habit. Or habit than duty. Fair enough. Um, how are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? Always up for a good jog. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? That's fair. He smiles and raises his collar to the wind. Okay, so we got that trap. What's all this, then? Someone's made a campfire a long time ago. A rusted, broken control box for the radio relay. Okay. What's this? Ooh, a scented scarf. Tiny inlets here. Off in the distance, there was a post... Where the post trail uh, toured something this ladder is too rusty to climb the sea air has eaten away okay left Jin stream is the new slash b i used to remember what that was well, one of the funnel points where the dark web filters out into the regular net <laughs> i like kim no kim's kim's great kim's great fun the fact that he puts up with me is amazing Worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Used to service what? Probably something that is no longer there. The lieutenant looks at the hunching concrete toad in front of him. It may have been used to service an aerostatic battleship in the atmosphere. Or a fortification, like a sea fort in the bay. Okay, I can try to open the door, but I only have one chance to do that. So, interfacing. My interfacing is garbage, if I remember. Uh, yep, my interfacing is a two. <laughs> 
Hold on, can I can I increase that? I already have that. I feel like this is going to be a lot of going around looking for clothing to up my skills. I cannot increase it. I wish I had a Kim there at the end of my benders. There you go. Would make things way easier. It's true. And you know what? Knowing Kim, he'd probably bring you water. Just to be nice. He's definitely patient. It's true. Super patient. Oh, yeah. I do have the tape that I need to sing, too. So, okay. We'll come back to this door another time. Just having Kim as a pal would be great. Agreed. I'm for that. Okay, while we're here, we'll check out the map. By the way, how do you fast travel? Oh, okay, you have to be at one of the points in order to travel. Because I was wandering around before, and I couldn't figure out how to fast travel anywhere. But now that we're here, let's go in. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock carelessly drilled into the wood okay take a look at the carpentry the carving on the door is block like and angular like the church itself two large beams shoot downwards sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold okay run your hand over a beam the surface is smooth from the wind but moist to the touch excellent take a look at the padlock this cheap looking padlock is sturdily built it shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. Look at the sticker. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. I approve. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a Kim on my random adventures. That would be nice. There is something blindingly modern about this symbol. Its modernness puts to shame everything you've seen before. Hmm. What makes it so modern? It's the contrast between the cherry chemical yellow and the rigor mortis. As if the cherry guy didn't know he was dead, or the dead guy didn't care that he was. Eh. Either way... You get the sense. The forces of future are at work here. Okay. Have you seen the symbol before? He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies, No. <laughs> that was a hell of a lot of build-up. I approve. What does it look like? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. Okay. What's, what's suggested of that exactly? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. Okay, fair enough. Agree it's very modern, It does, uh, but does the cheery guy not know he's dead, or does the dead guy not care that he is? That level of conceptual thinking is not part of my skill set. Excellent. Uh, Kim understands comedic timing. He does. Let's try to peel off the sticker. Uh, you just t said that my interfacing is crap. I can't increase it. Screw it! There's nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Beautiful. Put the sticker in your ledger after the last en entry where it belongs. Or on the ledger, right on the cover. Ooh. Choices. Um, put it on the ledger. Right on the front. Voila. Looks very modern. Hey, secret task. Style my paperwork. You're part of the future brigade now. And so is your formerly humdrum ledger. Neon, baby. <laughs> Wonderful. Right, open the padlock. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Let's go. Pull on the doors. As you do, you hear the echo of the doomed commercial area. It's black holes and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. 
Okay. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. Excellent. In the heart of the city. Might need my flashlight for this, but let's have a look. Oh, I stand corrected. Place is massive. A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Okay. Grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Feels like it's trying to become one with the church. The figure was added later. It's not part of the original church. Interesting. More of the forked lightning lightning pattern you saw outside. Bark beetles? No, it looks intentional, like some forgotten style. Blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Okay. Well, there's shoes and cash over there. Math. <laughs> the bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Hmm. You know, I've heard of this, but I don't know where from, and I don't remember why. Also, I like that Kim is just standing in the water with the wires running into it. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. Nice. It seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow, if not blotted out outright. Truly unusual. Nice. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Um, stomp your feet and clap your hands. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow well now i have to scream your voice is barely audible not a howl but the softest of whimpers turn to kim ask what's happening the lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head then he leans closer can you hear anything interesting almost nothing it's beginning to worry me <laughs> not really but it's extraordinary i've never experienced anything like this I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. Hmm. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. That would be really uncomfortable. Also, we appear to be right where this is pointing. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on its premises. Hmm. Maybe they wanted to discourage singing and dancing. Hmm. Could be. Hmm. Look at the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. I really wish I could change what I'm equipped with right now, because I can adjust my perception using various things, but... Hmm. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to get back into this. So, 17%, go! Nothing good. Ooh, pretty. Just darkness without end. It makes your head spin. Try to make out anything. There's nothing. You're dizzy and disoriented as you see dark and more dark rising. Interesting. Officer, what are you looking at? He follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is you're seeing. What's the darkness like? Filled with vague shapes of woodwork. The sense of a great height. 
and blink. <laughs> oh, hey, you people. see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Excellent. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Okay. Well, first things first. Before we talk to you, we're going to steal your shoes. Excellent. And steal your money. Beautiful. Okay. Now, you, sir. Is that a man? Looks more like part of the carpentry of the building came alive and is now studying you intently. Excellent, Brian. The crab man. <laughs> My reaction speed is not great. <laughs> uh, who's there? The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Fan, that's an amazing emote, I approve. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be alright. You come to the right place. Interesting. That accent is Villa Lobos. A peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking Mesks in Rivershaw. Okay. Hold on. Stop it right there. Pussy, what's with this? I'm not scared, I just don't understand why the female sexual organs have to be associated with weakness. <laughs> Screw it, let's go for it. You really got a case of frayed nerves, pussy. And this usage comes from pussy laminus. Everybody knows that. Of course, everybody. Um, oops. Damn it, rhetoric. Chill out, man. Here you could receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of that despair at the bottom of that bottle. We don't know why he's in the rafters yet. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I mean, maybe. You got got by the fictional dictionary, right? <laughs> I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe... The ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. I mean, that's fair. Balls are soft and squishy, pushy stick of eating, right? <laughs> uh, who was that? Betty White, I want to say. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I think it's attributed to her quite often. Also, I appear to be dropping frames for reasons that are beyond me. Hold on a second. Hopefully it's not... That was Betty. Okay. Hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. But, yeah, it's definitely dropping frames. Weird. Let's keep going and see what happens with it. Hopefully it's not too bad. Windows update? I mean, maybe. No, no, it's, it's something on my end. Um, or possibly Twitch's end which is always a possibility, but if I'm dropping frames, it's probably my end. So, it seems to have stabilized. Let's keep going for now. If it goes really, really badly, we'll figure something out. Right. Uh, brain. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. <laughs> I always get Windows up Windows Pro just so I can control Windows Update. Yeah, agreed. So I guess I have a bit of a problem. It's been getting out of hand. I'm a policeman. I need to know some about police things. <laughs> oh hell no, run away. Oh shit. You can literally just bail. <laughs> I guess I have had a bit of a problem. It's fine. Is that cruel away? I see deep inside you. Your body and your spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgement. And you don't even know it. K 
Okay. Oh, I'm very in touch with my suffering. <laughs> Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc El Vino is wrecking on your mind and your spirit. Necesita parar, homie. Hmm. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. <laughs> Kim is officially tired of my shit. Uh, <laughs> For some reason, I feel like you have a point. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel like he has a point. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. Wasteland of reality. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a moment. This is the church of the Mother of Silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. This Mother of Silence sounds like a serious player. You might want to be careful until you find out what you're dealing with. Okay. Hopefully... Looks like this... The dropping of the frames has stopped, so hopefully that's the case for you guys as well. Um, let's see. You must be the crab man. Some ravers want to turn this place to a nightclub. Do you know where the other spooker is? Point to a strange machines around you. Um. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's start with that. Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. Okay. So there is another person living in the church, and it's Vieta. Hmm. No. I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. Gotcha. Or maybe not that young. H is just one of the many masks we wear. Hmm. Do you know where she is? That's what I said, Holmes. Excellent. Uh, how can you not know? How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. Yeah, fair enough. So you've got nothing else to tell me how she looks, what she does, who she is. I'm afraid not, S.A. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... He shrugs. Brain? Or search through her radio computer. I mean, there is that. Uh, some people want to turn this into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside, right? I see them. Think they scared of me. <laughs> uh, do they have a reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Oh, well, that's good to know. Uh, what do you think about the nightclub? Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there. In vibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Yeah, fair enough. Might even be nice to have some company. Oh, he's lonely. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Okay. You must be crab man then. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me. I won't stop you from using it. <laughs> Fair, you look more like a spider. If you're not a crab, then what are you? Uh, no, you, you look more like a spider. I always thought of myself more like a flame. Yeah. Flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. <laughs> That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? So, did you carve the sculptures? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Okay. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. Interesting. All right. Let's consider the context and meaning here. Uh, I see what you've done there. It's as if these figures are trying to become one with the church, perhaps with the mother herself. Hmm. Or I can say you've got nice curves going on. 
They seem a bit derivative. Uh, you're promoting the objectification of women with your reactionary depiction of female bodies. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go with the mother comment. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. Fair enough. Uh, what were you before you became a crab man and a woodcarver? I was in a gang way, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. <laughs> Shake your head. So many people losing their memory, a certain portent of doom. <laughs> I lost my memory too. It haunts me. No, man. You gotta let that shit go. Then the mother's light touch will fill you with rapture. Interesting. He looks at you as if he wants to pat you on the back. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I am going to take a very, very quick break because I need to use the restroom real fast. So I'll be back in just a moment, but I will leave you guys with some fun, fancy tunes. So I'll be back just a moment. Give me like five. And we're back. Hopefully everybody had a good break. Sorry about the quick exit there. My, uh, my dinner kind of came up sideways and I don't know why. It's slightly alarming. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, probably too much information. Anyway. Uh, right. So. Your place among your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place. Right, 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 his name. Okay, so. My name is Harrier Dubois. Harrier Dubois. <laughs> and my place in the world is Lieutenant Double... Double your freighter. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't do names either. It's fine. Names are out. I don't care what mine is. That's not quite right. Well, you're getting somewhere. Any one of us could have been anything else. No, no, tell us more. <laughs> Color, frequency, you know. <laughs> we are all one who sing the mother's glory. Okay. I can, I can get behind Tiago here. He seems nice. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. Okay. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. So who is Mother Silence? Oh. That's no simple question, I said. She is one who can be painted or sculpted. Okay. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. Okay. And what happens when you drink from the perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. Okay. Are you sure you didn't search one drug for another? No, what? No, he's being amiable, amiable right now. We'll be nice. Uh, I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. Silent spot, man. Keep up. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Okay. Can you sing? Sing something for me. I am from No Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. Yeah, fair enough. Marietti is a mesque style of music and dance, commonly seen at all manner of festivities, especially weddings. It's delightfully quaint owing to its peasant origins. Okay. So how'd you find this place? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Okay. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. It didn't belong to me. Interesting. Uh, are these your shoes? 
because I kind of want them. I think they were. A long time ago. I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of the silent. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. Nice. Um. Yeah, I guess let's ask. Are you sure you didn't switch for just one drug to another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Yeah, fair enough. Too gleeful those words. He is lying. Not to you, to his very own self. Hmm. Faith can be a kind of drug. It's... To a point. People certainly can get hooked on it. Yeah, let's go for that. I heard that before, Way. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think. When's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover? Regretting what you did last night. Fair enough. There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. Uh, I think love might have been my drug of choice, and I think I'm still hung over from it. It's very tragic sounding. We're go going for that. She took you for a good spin, huh? Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. Oh. The mother will eat all of you. And never spit you out. Well, that's charming. <laughs> uh, I guess you have a point. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. Right. Other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Huh. Well, okay then. Right. Also, there's some pants over here. Or, no, it's a scarf. Okay. Plus one to the pain threshold. That's probably useful. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, observing the view. Obscuring the view, sorry. And a cracked pane of glass. Okay. We're making our way over to the nice lady's computer. Spider has spun a web around the wood-carved pillar. I like that he's just chilling. Like, doesn't care. Just just hanging out. Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tapes spinning on empty. Portable Harmon while she tape recorder. It's possible it's recording something. Someone siphoning electrical current from outside into the antenna. Okay. Can I look into that? In white, silver, and apricot fields, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced, and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. Okay. This is... Her innocence, Dolores Day. Gotcha. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Um, uh, what do you think? Do we kneel? I, I can't remember much about this religion, so do we kneel or no? I'm not overly religious myself, so I'm going to say no. Religion is what you make it. That's true. I'll say no. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multiple. 
multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. And being watched. As if under a microscope. Look up. The woman looks down at you, standing there. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye. Of what? Compassion? Remorse? Brain? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. Aww. You. Thank you, Empathy. Um... Compassion, remorse, mourning. It's not possible to live. Um... Let's say compassion. As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Okay, I'll do the same. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot-colored light of the window above you. The woman still smiles, her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. So, let's see. I've got a decent chance to check my encyclopedia on how I knew it was the mother of humanism. And, where are you going? Are you running away? No? What are you doing? And I've got a better than decent chance of reconstructing the cracked glass. Let's do that. The shards glimmer in the dark. You see little pearls of light on the edges of the crack that splits the female figure. Something was written there. Remains of broken letters line the emulsion. What it said, you do not know. 83% chance and I flub it. Right. Um, that was visual calculus, right? Let's level it up. There we go. Now when we come back, we can do this. Uh, encyclopedia, go! Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. Okay. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. Come here. And will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. Uh, what exactly is an innocence? Uh, when did she rule? What else do I know about her? Yeah, let's just go down the list. The highest category of historic individual. An embodiment of the world spirit. Let's go for Tyrant. In a way, an innocence is elected to office by the founding party. A precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built from the ground up to accommodate an ascetic rule should it coincide with our time. Interesting. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Okay, is one in office now? No, we are alone. Right, when did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter travel and the connected world. Okay. It's okay, Kronos. Uh, what else do I know? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene La Navigateur, Queen of Seren. <laughs> Modern-day Sir Laclay, also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. I, I don't understand you, Kronos, why are you... 
when the pettins get so good that you must put your paw on somebody's nose. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh. He's half passing out. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not laughing at you. It's okay. The floppiest of kitties. So when he was a kitten, um, when I first got him from the pound, he had really bad kennel cough. But about a month later, he was finally relaxed. He was feeling a lot better. Um, enjoy your lurk, Ixie. Um, he, he was finally feeling a lot better and was actually comfortable. And when he passed out, he passed out hard. Like to the point that he would just flop. And if you tried to pick him up without supporting him, he would just roll. <laughs> so you had to be really careful moving him when he was asleep because he wouldn't wake up. <laughs> so relaxed. It's okay, go ahead. You can have some water, it's okay. Go ahead. Just gonna lurk, this game should be great for you. I'm loving this game, honestly. Sincerely loving this game. Enjoy the water. There you go. Right. She was gorgeous. Continue. Draped in ancient sadness. Are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this? Dwarfed? Possibly not, but might as well go ahead. Heartwarming kitty stories. Yeah. I've got a lot. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. It's okay. Yes! Big Bummer! Boring history! Gotta keep it light, man! Keep it moving! Get fucked up instead! <laughs> oh, necktie. <laughs> um, where is this coming from? The past. It's a silo of sadness. Fermenting. You should keep away. Okay, Inland Empire is obsessed with not telling me my history, which is a shame because I'm really curious about what's going on. However, if that really is what sent me into a doom spiral, I maybe don't want to know. But anyway. Fuck this pain, Bratan. It's unhealthy. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, Necktie is on my side, kind of. Except I think he also wants to kill me. So, I mean, there's that. He wants to kill me in a very specific way. He wants me to get so high that my heart stops, I think, is generally, like, kind of how he wants to go. Like, that's, in a way, that's technically on my side. Necktie just knows what you really need. <laughs> he wants me to butt chug embalming fluid. <laughs> like, literal embalming fluid. <laughs> No, you must know. Um, better not go poking any further. No, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. Uh, according to Urban Dictionary, Bataan is Russian slang for brother. Oh, nice! It's like Electrochemistry's Irresponsible Big Brother. <laughs> okay, but Hippophant, last week, he quite literally said exactly that. <laughs> it, it wasn't even Electrochemistry, it was, it was Necktie. Necktie told me I not only had to buy the embalming fluid, but... <laughs> was it Electro? Necktie wanted you to have the bottle. Electro wanted me to butt chug it. Okay, well. I had those confused then. I think they were both having a conversation amongst themselves for a minute there, so. <laughs> uh, right, so she... Similar grass and matters of philosophy, theology, science, and courage. She was by all means a kept woman. Okay, more. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorean court. A court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. 
In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. Interesting. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. Interesting. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece hmm. of reality you're standing on. Excellent. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Not to be confused with DeLorean cars, which are crap. Uh, wow! Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared, and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Uh, okay. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. Interesting. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. Tell me more. As did we all. The lands of the mess and the occident and even far away supramundi Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Interesting. So she was crowned. In a city called Advesperaskit in Vespa Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. Okay. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already, her therriers, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. Uh, I don't care how she looked. I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. Right. She must have been beautiful. Oh, yes. She looked like humanity's young mother. A perfect mother. Insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Okay. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attache of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. Then what happened? One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later huh. a young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human but something else okay something that had walked in our midst watching us stumble for hundreds if not thousands of years until it decided to interfere interfere in the course of our history we were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Okay, nut job, gotcha. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fouling piece eight times. Wow. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. Okay. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Interesting. So, was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But, terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. No. Was there something bad about her? I want to know. 
You already do. Although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her thereiers. Okay. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. Ah, what happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating inter-secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Margrit were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. Odd. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the placenta. Mare Interregnum. Sorry, that was probably loud when I hit the desk there. <laughs> Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. Okay. Interesting little bit of lore there. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. I mean, fair. Lieutenant Euphrator, you've stood there for over five minutes. <laughs> Quiet, you. The lieutenant's calm, echoes, calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? She's somehow connected to the case. Glowing lungs, that's fucked up. Nothing, just looking around. She's beautiful, she's not woman. Yell, war criminal. Hmm. She's not human. She's beautiful. Um. Let's be slightly stoic as we're bouncing up and down on this step. Uh, she's beautiful. That she is. A great sacred piece. I wonder what we are doing here, however. I mean, that's fair. In this church, I mean. The coast in general. We shouldn't linger. This isn't a good place to get lost in. Right. Reconstruct the, gra the glass. Nothing. Oh, Just for fuck's sake. Crack sparkles in the dark. There may have been a writing here, but you cannot make out what it said. At a 92% chance. 